Hey everyone, welcome, I'm Kyle, your host for today's video. In this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the premiere of Westworld Season 3. Throughout this video, we will be taking a closer look at Episode 1 discussing new characters, theories on what's going on, easter eggs you might have missed, and analyzing the new locations, relationships, and themes present in this new and exciting world. This video does contain spoilers, so if you don't want anything spoiled, I highly recommend you turn this off right now, but make sure you subscribe to the channel as I will be having daily Westworld videos breaking down each and every episode, cool theory videos, trailer breakdowns, easter egg videos, and more on the channel. So this episode is titled Pause Domine, which actually is an old Roman Catholic chant. In Latin, it roughly translates to, Spare, Lord, spare your people, be not angry with us forever. This actually connects us to what we heard in the trailers leading up to Season 3 when Dolores said that it was the real gods that were coming and that they're very angry. This is precisely what Dolores says later on in the episode when she's about to kill her ex-boyfriend and also head of Insight's bodyguard Martin Connells played by Tommy Flanagan. There is a major prevalent theme woven throughout each plot point in the episode, and also the new opening sequence, focusing on the relationship between psychology and philosophy, free will, and all of our loops. In the opening scene of the episode, we see the clear divide between the one percenters, like Delos mega investor Thomas Crushman, who used and abused his host, and people like Caleb, who is far more empathetic, having to deal with real world problems while living paycheck to paycheck. Dolores makes an immediate impact by swearing to complete her more primal loop of tearing the system down and using humans' own technology against him. Remember when she was in the forge reading all of these different biographies on people like Carl Strand? Well, she knows this guy's whole history. She can not only hack his security systems and infiltrate them, but she can also alter it to stunning effect, making reality into a virtual hell. So I'm just, I'm just going to go out there and say that Evan Rachel Wood is an absolute superstar and I've never been more impressed at her acting than I am right now. We see that Dolores is able to adjust her loops easily on the fly as opposed to her human counterparts who rely much more on technology, making her more of a three-dimensional character as opposed to the one we saw in Season 2. We see that she's mainly focused on vengeance for those who have wronged her, but we do see that she was able to adapt to her real-world surroundings and will have to let some of her disdain fall to the wayside as Caleb is holding and helping her at the end of the episode. One cool easter egg that I think could be a good bit of foreshadowing is the symbol of the middle of the maze, the man on the wall in the underpass where Caleb is holding Dolores. This could be a hint signifying that the theme for Dolores' maze, her maze in this season, is tied to rediscovering her earlier self. The scene actually very much mirrors the one her and young William had in season 1, so I think that it's something that we should pay careful attention to, and that it's possible that Caleb and Dolores could grow to share a strong connection and relationship as the season continues. The introduction to Aaron Paul's Caleb in this episode is a great one who's essentially trying to fake it until you make it. It's quite clear that he's questioning himself because the recruiter tells him he's not a good fit for this new job. However, he's able and willing to improve himself despite these apparent roadblocks. I found that it was easy to empathize with Caleb's situation, even though he turned into committing crimes with that Grand Theft Auto-like Rico app, much like his character Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. It's clear that he's trying to find a way to break through this loop and through this difficult situation, but it's clear this system has let him down. Honestly, it was pretty depressing seeing how difficult each waking moment was for him. His mother doesn't recognize him, he isn't even speaking with a real person when he's applying for a job and when he's asking these questions on how to improve. Speaking of waking moments, the scene with Dolores awakening in the first season and the one with Caleb in this episode is almost a carbon copy. Of course, Dolores is experiencing repetition living the same day over and over again, but honestly, I don't think it's that different from what Caleb is experiencing every day. So I thought that this was really absolutely a, a brilliant way to connect the two characters' lives and how they're both impacted by failing systems. We have a really nice contrast in Bernard's story as well, where he's all the way in China trying to make a life for himself, but ultimately he runs into problems when he's found out as a host and that he's not human. I love the way this show explores socio-political and economic issues such as the ones that Caleb and Bernard are experiencing right now. 
Bernard is the perfect vehicle to tell this specific type of story. Not only is he hiding his identity because of Dolores, but he's also hiding it because of the oppressive issues the hosts continue to face in the real world. He faces discrimination even though he's minding his own business, and Jeffrey Wright did an absolutely masterful job at being able to turn off Bernard's emotions at the flip of a switch. Bernard is one of my personal favorite characters because of how the show explores humanity within hosts. However, Bernard is very different than the last time we saw him, and like Caleb faces a system that cares very little about his survival. He's not actively trying to cause harm like Dolores is, which is a nice contrast to their stories, but ultimately we see that even a host can experience trauma like the PTSD Caleb is experiencing throughout his own life. Each of these characters are grappling with the idea of identity which is fascinating because it's so difficult to tell the difference between who's a host and who's human. They face similar problems and they're all experiencing pain and suffering which ultimately brings us back to the primal core loop of survival. One thing that I did find super interesting for Bernard's own personal survival was that he was interrogating himself and checking if Dolores had messed with his data. We have to remember that Dolores did build him back up again in the season 2 finale, so this is a pretty fair thing to be worried about if you're Bernard. But I think it's pretty clear that Bernard is going to play a very big role in the coming war versus Dolores as we see him phone up Ashley Stubbs, setting up the reveal with the map and Bernard that he would be returning to Westworld in the South China Sea. I will be doing a whole other video this week specifically on this topic, so be on the lookout for that on Wednesday or Thursday. Tomorrow I will be dropping a trailer breakdown video teasing some of what we saw in that trailer for episode 2, so that's going to be really exciting. But also I think we have to acknowledge the big post credit scene reveal with Maeve and the reveal of Warworld, so that's going to be another video as well on the channel. Overall, there was really so much to unpack in this episode, and I felt like it did a really good job establishing a whole new world and setting in just about an hour. Even though there is only 8 episodes this season, I'm really confident that this will continue to be one of the best shows on television. The cast is amazing, there's so many new interesting characters that we're going to be discussing, analyzing and breaking down on the channel, and I really thought Parse Demine was a great first entry into Season 3, setting up what is likely going to feel more like a soft reboot into Future World than a return back to the show's old ways. Some of my personal favorite moments were with Dolores, especially the scene where she's on a rampage killing everyone. She was like James Bond in that scene, so I really, really enjoyed that. And also how she replicated John Gallagher's bodyguard Martin, played by Tommy Flanagan. So I think he's a really, really excellent addition to the cast. So that is something that we're going to be talking about on the channel. And I really overall just enjoyed the setting and feel of each location. So I thought it was a really, really good episode. So like I said, I will be doing daily Westworld videos on the channel. I'm going to be doing trailer breakdown video tomorrow on Tuesday, probably an Easter egg video on Wednesday discussing Bernard's map and Warworld and some other great things like I spoke about just a bit earlier. So yeah, just be on the lookout. I'm going to be making a lot of content for Westworld Season 3. On Thursday, I might even do uh, like a new faction thing discussing the new AI system Rehoboam, which has some really, really interesting historical preferences and uh, connection to the Bible and all that. So, of course, I would love to know your thoughts on the episode. Let me know what you most connected with in this episode, which new characters were your favorite, and uh, yeah, what you're super excited to see in the next episode. If you got this far, thank you very much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what kind of Westworld videos you want to see on the channel. So don't be shy. I'd love to see your comments in the comment section. And of course, number one thing, please, please stay safe during this incredibly difficult time in our world right now. So thank you very much for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.